Welcome to Day Bello Gallico 6.4 pre-reading. This should cover 6.4 A and B. Quick note on vocabulary. This chapter uses the verb pertinent. We've seen this verb previously in sentence 36. Qua ad afeminandos animos pertinent. The things which pertain or apply to weakening the minds. In this chapter, we see this verb used in relation to a bridge. A bridge applies or pertains to the Helvetians. What exactly does that mean? How can a bridge apply or pertain to something? If you take that as a literal definition, it's kind of tough, but maybe we can think about the context. The brid bridge applies or reaches or stretches to the Helvetians. Okay, we need to have a more detailed conversation about indirect statements because they feature prominently in this chapter. First of all, you have to remember, Caesar thinks that you are a Roman. And since he thinks that you are a Roman, he thinks you understand things like this. Uh, magistrum. Discipulos. Laudare. So, Caesar thinks that if you see a statement like this, that is an accusative infinitive construction, you'll know automatically that this is an accusative infinitive, so he will do things like put the main verb at the end of the accusative infinitive construction. Existimabat. Because he assumes that you're reading in order, and the minute you see this accusative infinitive, you'll think, oh, that the teacher praises the students he was thinking. So he's assuming that you can wrap your head around the fact that this part of the sentence comes before the kissing verb that introduces an indirect statement. And he does this in this chapter. He gives you an indirect statement, and then he gives you the kissing verb. So watch out for that. Since we're talking about indirect statements and the screwy thing Caesar does, I thought we would take a second to review the infinitive chart. Okay, so two um, accusative infinitive constructions Caesar has in this chapter use forms of the verb persuadeo, which is to persuade, and kogo, which is to force. So here's the active. Notice that's just from the dictionary entry. The passive, all the conjugations form their passive infinitive with a long I. Watch out for the third conjugation. It knocks off the ERE -E and replaces it with that long I. So anything in this row here means it's going on at the same time as the main verb in the sentence. Your perfect infinitive, notice it's the perfect stem plus isse. For the active, the passive is a two-part verb, persuasum esse and coactum esse. So anything in the perfect infinitive happens before the main verb. So this would be like, yeah, before the main verb. And then let's look at the future infinitive. The future Infinitives are both two-part verbs. Persuasurum esse, you notice that this is future because of the U-R, and coactorum esse. Now again, Caesar is assuming that you know Latin, so you can wrap your head around the fact that sometimes he gaps the second half of these two-part infinitives. Ooh, sneaky, Caesar. And that is going to show up a lot in this chapter. He's going to give you indirect statements where he jumps into accusative infinitive and he gives you the kissing verb at the end and he gaps the essay um, in these two-part words. So persuasum essay, quote, octum essay, that means that somebody was persuaded before the main verb or first before, um, was forced prior to the main verb. Persuasurum essay means that somebody will persuade after the main verb or will force after the main verb. Okay, Caesar gives us a couple dates um, in chapter 6. The first date that we encountered was ad 5 calends April, which means five days before the calends of April. So the Romans would count like this, April 1st, that's the calends, and then they'd go five days before, March 31st, March 30th, March 29th, and March 28th. Now, when the Romans counted five days before April 1st, they would actually count April 1st, so... One, two, three, four, five. So March 28th, odd five, Collins April, 
That's the day that the Helvetians set for their departure. You know, they burned the city and they left. The next date that Caesar mentions is the Ides of April. The Ides of April. And um, on some months, the Ides are the 13th, and some months, the Ides are the 15th. In this instance, the Ides of April equals April 13th. So the two dates he mentions are March 28th and April 13th. Okay, what year is it? Do you remember how the Romans talk about year? They don't use numbers like 1994. Instead, they talk about the year in terms of who was consul then, and you're expecting an ablative absolute. So in this chapter, Caesar gives us the names of the two people who were consuls as an ablative absolute, assuming that the Romans would just know what year that was.